I'm Christy Cobb. I teach at Wingate University. Um, I want to talk today about slavery in the Greco-Roman world. So first, slavery was pervasive in the Greco-Roman world. By this I mean that enslaved persons were everywhere and ideas about slavery were also everywhere in literature, in material culture, um, in, in society as a whole. What we know about enslaved persons in the Greco-Roman world comes from this. It comes from texts that were most, mostly written by um, free persons and also from material culture. We do not have a lot of information about enslaved persons from their perspective in antiquity. So when we're trying to understand slavery and enslavement in the Greco-Roman world, we have to use the sources that we have um, most of which are view enslaved persons as not fully human. The text suggests that slaves were viewed as bodies, which were used for work, used for um, uh, sexual purposes sometimes, and, and not viewed as, as fully human. There's a couple of ways that we can even see this in the text. For instance, the language that's used um, to talk about slaves in antiquity. So the word, one of the words for slave in the Greek is doulos. And that word is interchangeable um, in many texts with the word for body, soma. So we see by that that enslavers and free people were viewing an enslaved person as a body. And the enslaved persons were used in a variety of ways in the um, Greco-Roman context. So they had many different jobs. Um, in fact, almost every job was available to an enslaved person in antiquity. We often divide uh, the jobs of enslaved persons in between, from rural and urban. And what we see inside the cities in the Greco-Roman world are um, enslaved persons working in a variety of contexts, um, even dealing with um, money, economic issues, um, but often in domestic contexts as well. So um, a more elite person living in the city might have a large number of enslaved workers in their household. Um, whereas in the rural setting, we see often that enslaved persons were used for um, agriculture, farming, as well as sometimes in the domestic context as well. Um, in both of these contexts, though, um, enslaved persons were not viewed as full humans. And as I mentioned, this the language choice that um, texts use to reference uh, slaves in antiquity, it reveals that. This use and abuse of enslaved persons um, not only consisted of the jobs that enslaved persons were used for, but also um, we've, we found that, um, that enslavers used enslaved persons um, sexually, um, and this was not considered sort of unacceptable in antiquity. Uh, so a, a you know, enslaved woman, for example, might be susceptible to rape in the household and have no um, choice in that matter. This was a part of what um, they experienced as a part of their enslavement. Um, and additionally, um, enslaved persons were susceptible to bodily punishment. Um, we think pretty, pretty regularly, um, this would have been a regular occurrence that if an in, enslaved person, um, you know, would, per, was perceived as making a mistake, the um, enslaver would beat them, would torture them, would punish them. Um, and so I, I've heard in my own um, teaching and scholarship that sometimes people will look to the Greco-Roman world and say, well, slavery wasn't as bad in the Greco-Roman world as it was in, let's say, the context of America. But I would say that s slavery was just as bad in the Greco-Roman world. We have material culture evidence of the torture practices of the, the chains and the bonds that were used against enslaved persons. And of course, the sexual availability of enslaved persons also adds to this. Um, and so um, while there are many other differences um, when comparing sort of modern slavery to ancient slavery, um, 
I think that, that we can all agree that both of the instances of slavery were um, unethical and inhumane treatment of enslaved persons. One of the ways that slavery is different in the Greco-Roman context than to the American context is that slavery in the Greco-Roman world was not necessarily based on race or ethnicity. So a person might become enslaved in the Greco-Roman world um, through uh, war, right? Uh, when their, their city or their community was um, conquered by another group of people. Um, or also um, being born into to slavery would make one um, enslaved person as well. Um, and there were some other ways um, that we find referenced in, in literature such as um, kidnapping or exposure, meaning um, when a family is unable to take care of a, a child that they've just had, then they might leave that child and then that child could be raised as an enslaved person, even if they were born free. Um, so there's a number of different ways a person might have become enslaved in antiquity. Um, and then another sort of difference here is the um, pursuit of freedom in antiquity. It's what we call manumission. And, um, and some enslaved persons were, were manumitted um, upon the death of their enslaver. That happened sometimes. Um, also, occasionally, there, um, an enslaver might have left um, a clause about manumission in their will, but then when um, the person actually passed, the enslaved persons were not freed. Um, so <laughs> manumission was, uh, was tricky and was often used as a tool as well to control enslaved persons. And when thinking about slavery in the Greco-Roman world, the introduction of, of Christianity into this world didn't change the practices of slavery. Um, so there were enslaved persons active in, in Christianity. Um, in fact, uh, one scholar, um, Kat Shainer, has written a book on enslaved leadership within early Christianity and early Christian communities. So we know that there were enslaved persons active in Christianity. We know um, that there were um, leaders that were enslaved. Um, there's a, a document um, Pliny's letter to Trajan uh, that mentions two enslaved female deacons who um, were named in this letter as Christians. And, um, and so we have references of enslaved persons as not only involved in Christianity, but also um, leaders in Christianity. Um, but we, the, these people who were enslaved were not freed by their involvement in Christianity. They remained enslaved. Um, and so we do have evidence of, of slavery, the pervasiveness of slavery in, um, in the New Testament, in the texts of early Christianity as well. Um, we do also have, have evidence of early Christians who uh, tortured and, um, and mistreated, um, used corporal punishment against their enslaved persons in, in the Christian world. Um, so some of this material culture piece is what's so important about our, um, our discussions about slavery because the texts that were written in antiquity were written by free people for the most part. And so um, when we, that means our perspective to understand an enslaved person is limited by these texts. So often objects or material culture within antiquity can give us a sort of more broader idea of understanding um, slavery in antiquity. So for example, there is a slave collar that has been found um, that mentions an enslaved person and says if they're, if, you know, if basically if the, if the enslaved person has run, return to their enslaver and that enslaver uh, was a Christian bishop and this was written on the, the collar that we have. So we have these, these pieces, these objects of, um, that we can sort of point to, look to, hold, that will show us uh, how, um, just how you know, horrible um, slavery was in the Greco-Roman world and also how pervasive it was. So when thinking about, about slavery in antiquity, all of these things are, are sort of important as we study slavery, as we read texts 
um, about, uh, about slavery as we consider um, our texts within the New Testament and within early Christianity as well, um, we have to remember sort of the, the inhumane treatment of slaves and that um, the introduction to Christianity didn't necessarily change these practices that were present in the Greco-Roman world.